from my head rendered in real time. The green and red bars show that same signal displayed by frequency, with lower frequencies here and higher frequencies up here. You're actually looking inside my head as I speak. These graphs are compelling, they're undulating, but from a human's perspective, they're actually not very useful. That's why we spend a lot of time thinking about how to make this data meaningful to the people who use it. For instance, what if I could use this data to find out how relaxed I am at any moment? Or what if I can take that information and put it into an organic shape up on the screen? The shape on the right over here has become an indicator of what's going on in my head. The more relaxed I am, the more the energy is going to fall through it. I may also be interested in knowing how focused I am so I can put my level of attention into the circuit board on the other side. And the more focused my brain is, the more circuit board's gonna surge with energy. Ordinarily, I would have no way of knowing how focused or relaxed I was in any tangible way. As we know, our feelings about how we're feeling are notoriously unreliable. We've all had stress creep up on us without even noticing it until we've lost it on someone who didn't deserve it, and then we realize that we probably should have checked in with ourselves a little earlier. This new awareness opens up vast possibilities for applications that help improve our lives and ourselves. We're trying to create technology that uses the insights to make our works more efficient, our breaks more relaxing, and our connections deeper and more fulfilling than ever. I'm going to share some of these visions for you in a, fit, in a bit, but first I want to take a look at how we got here. <laughs> By the way, feel free to check in on my head at any time. My team at Interaxon and I have been developing thought control applications for almost a decade now. In the first phase of development, we were really enthused by all the things we could control with our mind. We were making things activate and act, light up and work just by thinking. We are transcending the space between the mind and the device. We brought to life a vast array of prototypes and products that you could control with your mind, like thought-controlled home appliances or slot car games or video games or a levitating chair. We created technology and applications that engaged people's imaginations, and it was really exciting. And then we were asked to do something really big for the Olympics. We were invited to create a massive installation at the Vancouver 2010 Winter Olympics, where you in Vancouver got to control the lighting on the CN Tower, the Canadian Parliament Buildings, and Niagara Falls from all the way across the country using their mind. Over the 17 days of the Olympics, 7,000 visitors from all over the world actually got to individually control the lights in the CN Tower, Parliament, and Niagara in real time with their minds from across the country 3,000 kilometers away. So controlling stuff with your mind is pretty cool. But we're always interested in multi-tiered levels of human interaction, and so we began looking at inventing thought-controlled applications in a more complex frame than just control. And that was responsiveness. We realized that we had a system that allowed technology to know something about you, and it could join into the relationship with you. We created the responsive room, where the lights, music, and blinds adjusted to your state. They followed the subtle shifts in your mental activity. So as you settled into relaxation at the end of the hard day in the couch in our office, the music would mellow with you. When you read, the desk lamp would get brighter. If you nod off, the system would know, dimming to darkness as you do. We then realized that if technology could know something about you and use it to help you, there's an even more valuable application than that, that you could know something about yourself. We could know sides of ourselves that were all but invisible and come to see things that were previously hidden. Let me show you an example of what I'm talking about here. Here's an application that I created for the iPad. So the goal of the game, or the original game Zenbound, is